morning and how are you doing this morning, Mr. Brackett? I'm doing well. Good. My name is Sarah Tuck and I will be your host for today. We would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. And after the show, we would like for you to share, subscribe and like with your friends. Today we have Mr. Lanton Brackett the third from Houston, Texas, from Texas. Yes, um, Dallas, Texas. Da okay, Dallas, Texas. And he is married and he is the proud father of three children and he has two grandchildren. He is also a, the author of the book called Can I Just Tell the Truth, which can be found on Amazon.com. He is a professional speaker, panelist, authorized ocean trainer. He also studied electronics engineering at Norfolk State University. And he once worked with Tennessee State in Nashville, Tennessee. So we welcome you today, Mr. Brackett III. And today your topic is leadership that you're gonna be speaking with us on. So tell us about that. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. And mm -hmm. um, I've always had a passion for leadership um, in, in, in whether it be in the community, whether it be in my home, whether it be at work. And uh, as a result of that, I, you know, I formed some opinions about it. And, and as we all have opinions about leadership and other things, uh, what's a little bit different is that I wrote a lot of uh, leadership, original leadership quotes and, and so much so that I ended up with three books worth of original leadership quotes. <laughs> my latest book is used to called out is called, Can I Just Tell the Truth? Which sounds a little bit like I'm about to start gossiping. Uh, but really, it's it's my take on leadership. Okay. Well, uh, just tell us uh, something about your book, the leadership okay. book. Okay, the book uh, is is set up. It's it's really uh, it's, I think it's divided into four sections, and there's four different sections of just original leadership quotes, and it's it's also in, in a journal form. And so there are about two or three leadership quotes and then there's space for you to write so that you can reflect on, you know, whether you agree with that, you disagree with it. And the, the, the book is really designed to be a conversation piece uh, so that, you know, if, for example, with you and I, uh, we could have a discussion about one of the quotes and then just sit down and talk about it in terms of, you know, what, what, what do we think about that? What's been our experience, whether it be at home, at our church, at work or wherever, and uh, how we've been impacted by leadership. And then it, ultimately at the end of the day, it's about how can we improve? So let's have a dialogue and then let's start thinking about it in terms of how can we get better? And if we get better as leaders, then that, that means that we'll interact with each other in a much different way. And in saying that, uh, I know that when you was uh, teaching, which you teach a lot, but uh, have you been able to reach out or some of your past students been able to reach out to you and are you seen some of the things that they have done? Yes, uh, yeah, and just to be clear, I, I, I do a lot of training, so I, I'm not a formal uh, educator. My wife is okay. an educator, but, but <laughs> I, I have done a lot of training and, and I've also done a lot of leading in large organizations. And so, yeah, I, I can see uh, examples uh, in, in the workplace where individuals uh, have been developed uh, and coached and, and now have some of them are doing far better than I am, quite frankly. Um, so, so which, but it's good to know that you had, some, had a hand in that. And even at the university, when I was in student affairs as executive director of student affairs, uh, there were a number of students that we kind of adopted. And uh, of course, I gave them copies of the books and so forth. And also, help work with them. And, and now some of those individuals are, are very soon to graduate. And it's nice to see that they remain on the Dean's list. Uh, one young lady in particular comes to mind. She was trying to get into the dental program and was unsuccessful in testing. And I literally took her test scores and said, let me analyze it, looked at it and uh, she took uh, two attempts. Uh, but ultimately she was able to, to pass the test. She already had the grades and so she had to get past the interest test. And so uh, just having an opportunity to to impact people in a real way because leadership is not something that we can just speak about it's something that you have to really go out and demonstrate you know we talk about uh visible leadership you hear people talk about servant leadership right now you hear a lot of talk about courageous leadership 
You know, are you willing to stand up against bullies, whether they be uh, on the playground and, you know, in a hoodie or they're in a corporate office in a, in a three-piece suit? Uh, you still have to be able to have courageous leadership. So I think that it's something that you have to demonstrate and, and it is something that is much needed. And right now, I think we need a resurgence in leadership in this country. I would agree as well. And, you know, with having leadership, it helps people to be able to make different, come up with different ideas. And they have someone that has went before them as they can say, well, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. So it gives them a stronger foundation while they're building to be able to do things. I agree with that. And one thing I would say is, is, is you know, leadership bring. Well, first of all, I have this, one of my quotes talks about that uh, a leader doesn't have any uh, magic wand that he can wave over you and make you better. And for example, even if you think of a leader as being a coach, uh, I can't make you run any faster than you can already run. Right. I can't make you jump any higher than you can already jump. However, what I can do is I can, I can make you aware of the fact that you can do more than you're doing. And I think, and so I, I call leaders to be energy amplifiers. It's the energy that you already have, but I amplify that by being positive, by being supportive, uh, by doing things that uh, create an inclusive environment, a, a safe learning environment, uh, and and it, so that you can feel like you can bring your whole self to the game and that you can become engaged in the process. But as you and I know, right, if, if you walk in the room and, and we're not even speaking to you, you're probably not gonna bring your best game because you're already thinking in your mind, well, why is no one not speaking? They've invited me to come and I'm here, but nobody's saying anything to me. On the other hand, if, if, if when you show up, I go and I embrace you and I call you by name and I tell everybody, listen, look, everyone, here, it's Miss Tuck is here. I mean, look how much, <laughs> see, you're already smiling. See what I'm saying? And, and that's the impact that leader, a leader is able to have on people in terms of recognizing who they are and what they bring to the table. And not only making space for them, but making space for, so that they can work and that they can be all that they can be uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And in doing so, it doesn't just help the enterprise that we're working on right now, but you're able to take that same feeling back home, take that same feeling back to your community, whether you're in the, uh, working at the pantry or whether you're in the church or whatever it is that you're doing, you can take those same leadership skills that you, you've acquired uh, by coming in contact with somebody who was concerned enough about you, not just about what we're doing, but about you as a person. And you have to have some energy. You have to bring that energy because it's like you said, if you come in a place and it's quiet or nobody act like they want you to be there, then you feel like, well, what am I doing here? You know, so you have to bring energy as well as also to get it. And sometimes you have to start that energy, you know, amongst people. Am I correct? Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And as a leader, I mean, a leader sets the tone, um, shapes the culture, if you will. So if, uh, and that's why it's so important that, you know, people talk about accountability, especially right now you hear a lot of discussion about accountability, but people talk about accountability as in, you know, you're being in trouble. Accountability is something that stems from setting expectations. If I set expectations, then, and I also make sure you have the tools to be successful and the training and the coaching to be successful, then expectation becomes a right, right? I have the right to expect something at the end because I put something in on, on at the beginning. And I think that as a leader, when you're willing to do that for people and you're willing to, to allow them to grow and to experience uh, new things in new ways and be willing to, to allow them to take risks, uh, you grow them as an individual. So the organization grows because, you know, you hear this, the, the phrase, if, if I knew better, I, I would do better. That is absolutely correct. Most people, if they knew better, they would do better. Right. But not everyone will take the time to help you know better and know more and to, to build more skill, whether it be acting or writing books or, or you know, working at a grocery store or, you know, working on the computer. But the more skills that you have and you acquire, uh, the more you're able to be able to be successful in what you're doing. But I think a lot of that, a lot of the times, even if we go and do some of the technical things, we won't spend time with people to do the things, the soft skills, like how do you engage someone? How do you speak? Uh, being courteous, the importance and the power of thank you and please. 
you know, I, I, I'm amazed. I travel a lot. So when I go to the airport, I'm still amazed at people who will walk up behind you. You don't see them, right? And will not say, excuse me. And just then get frustrated with you because you didn't move, even though you didn't see them. On the other hand, I, when I see people that walk up and say, excuse me, then it's like parting the Red Sea. Everybody moves to the audio way. The thing of it is, is that it's just understanding how do you communicate with people? How do you do so in such a way that people want to work with you, to engage with you, and to partner with you? Because you can be the smartest person in the room. That really doesn't matter if you're, if you're the person who, that no one wants to work with, because you're just smart by yourself, right, and lonely. Uh, versus the individual who may not know as much as you do, but is willing to engage others, to learn from others, to partner with others, they will always be much more successful than the person who's just the know-it-all. Or, you know, I, I'm smarter than everybody, so I can turn my nose up. Uh, the reality is, is that success comes when teams work together for a common goal. And we're not working against each other and we don't have hidden agendas. You're right about not working against each other. And, you know, do you find that when you talk to different people and help them, that when you do maybe watch on TV or open the paper in the newspaper and see that someone that you in the past have been in front of to encourage and do stuff that you see them making a difference i do i do and um and i've had a number of people to come back whether they wrote me or whether they i saw them physically or whatever and right now we're not seeing too many people in this pandemic but it's refreshing when you hear someone say that you made an impact on my life and uh, and, uh, and most of the time uh, we don't know how much of an impact we've had on somebody else's life unless they come back and give a testimony with that regard mm -hmm. But it's, it's always refreshing to see people, for, for example, I can think of somebody, I won't call their name, but that uh, early on was a uh, worked at, uh, where, where I was working at the time and worked in the warehouse and as an hourly person. And I was able to help create a, a self-domination program by which you can you know, self-identify that, hey, I would like to be a supervisor. And we created a path for that individual to do that. Um, I'll just jump to the end, you know, long story short, you know, some, I don't know, 10, 15 years later, that person is now vice president of operations of that entire region. You know, and this is the person who, who was an hourly person at the time. And, and, and the story for most of those individuals is they, they, they work hourly and they work there 20 years, 25 years or whatever, 30 years and retire and never get above that level. And there's nothing wrong with that because I always tell people their work is honorable. Um, but the fact is that this person had a tremendous amount of potential that was able to be unleashed. And so, you know, I, I, I haven't been in direct uh, uh, connection with them for a long time. I just gave them a pathway to get started. And from that, they did the rest on their own. And with, I'm sure with partnership with other people who sponsored them along the way. Well, as the old saying goes, and I heard it a lot in church and with parents and elderly people, they always say, you know, be careful because you never know when somebody's watching you that they want a pattern after you. So, you know, like you said, it's good when you have people to come back and say, you know, um, I heard you say this, or I seen you do this, and it inspired me to, to do this and even go further in their life and doing things. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. And like I said, uh, you know, I gave him one time and, and, and I think I may have shared with you before, I had a gentleman that I worked with and he was one of my, uh, my leads and uh, early, early in my career. And um, his mother passed on a Saturday and his mother-in-law passed the following Saturday. Well, I didn't know any of this. And, and one day he called me, uh, he called me at home and he starts telling me, the older gentleman starts telling me about this and so forth. And I'll be honest with you, I was, I was taken aback because I didn't know that, that he felt uh, that way about me, that I would be the person that he would call to talk to me about that type of situation. And that's, that's something that's very close and dear and dear. I mean, losing a, a mother, thank God my mom's still around. She's 75 years, she's still here. 75 years old, she's still here. And, uh, and that he would take the time to, to feel like that I would be empathetic enough, one, to, 
to care, two, to listen, and, and then to encourage. And I try to be an encourager of people. And I ended up uh, going to both of the funerals and spending time with the family. My wife and I uh, went with him, he and his wife to dinner several times. And uh, again, that's been a, a while ago, but we stay in touch. You know, we, we don't necessarily see each other all the time because he lives on the other side of town. But uh, when we do on occasion run into each other, it's, it's like a reunion. And, and, we're, and we're glad to see each other. And, uh, and there's always those good feelings. And he lets me know what's going on with his two grandsons who are now young men. They were little boys back then. Uh, and just keeping you up to breast with that. And, and I think sometimes just the fact that you, as a, as a leader, that you will take the time to get to know the person and ask them about how is Joe doing? You know, how is Susie doing? Uh, you were saying you was working on a project. How did that come out? And, and so, because I think that, uh, too often we look through people and around people. I would challenge anyone who's listening, you know, when it, do you know who the person was who served you in the last time you went to a restaurant? Do you know who the person was that checked you out at the grocery store? What was their name? And, and nine times out of 10, they have a big bag sitting right here with their name on it. But are we taking the time to look at that and to acknowledge them by name for the service that they're providing? Or are we just too busy doing what we're doing that we just, look through them, around them, and over them. Um, I have found that when you take the time to call somebody by name, that uh, when your service level goes up tremendously. Uh, I, here's, a, here's a very good call out. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm a, I have a membership with Costco. And I go in and I, of course, with the pandemic, they can't serve any food. But they still have people demonstrating, but you can't get the free sample. And one of the... Uh, young man told me, he says, you know, since we can't hand any food out, people act like we're not even here. And the young man said, he, he felt like he wasn't even a person because no one speaks, you know? And so I make it a point uh, that when I go by one of those individuals who's standing up there trying to get you to buy some macaroni and cheese or some Clorox or whatever it is, that I take the time to say, no, I don't want any of the item that you have, but how are you doing today? And you see them just light up, right? Because Imagine standing in a sea of people all day long and nobody saying anything to you. How dejected you must be by the end of the day. And a smile is, some, I, I call it currency. It's like money. The only difference is it doesn't run out. And I can <laughs> smile all day long and it, you know, I don't lose my smile. My smile just gets bigger and bigger, you know? And so being able to transfer some happiness to people. And we've been, we've been robbed of smiles because right now, you know, we, we got the pandemic, everybody has a mask on. So all I get to see is your eyes and your nose and eyes. And a lot of times with a lot of people, it's kind of hard to tell if they're frowning or they're smiling or what. We're having to guess. So in the, in the instances that I'm able to smile, even though my grandson, who's five years old, Isaiah, he says, Papa, you don't ever smile. I say, I smile all the time. So he, he demonstrated to me what I look like. He said, <laughs> <laughs> then I burst out laughing when he did that. But again, I think it's so important that we engage people, that we respect people, uh, that we... Uh, an encouragement to one another and that we show and exhibit leadership skills, uh, things like integrity and trust and uh, being trustworthy. I told my daughter when she was uh, younger, she said, Dad, you don't trust me. I said, it's not about whether I trust you or not. It's about whether you're trustworthy. I said, let me explain what that is. A person who is worthy of trust will do the right thing regardless if they're trusted or not. And uh, of course, she was trying to get an advantage, which be, being a, a teenager wanted to go to some party or something. You don't trust me, I do trust you, but that's not the point. Uh, but I think for us, it's really about exhibiting those behaviors that really change the, the score for people and make life a little easier, right? Because I don't know what troubles you may have had today. You don't know what troubles I've had today, but I do know this, you don't need me adding any trouble to your life. So and anything I can do to take a burden off, if it's nothing but a kind word, if it's just being courteous, then let me go ahead and do that because that doesn't cost me anything. And at the end of the day, you and I will, will, will get along much better. Next time you see me, you'll be glad to see me versus saying, oh, Lord, here he comes. Again. <laughs> so true. So true. And like you said, with the mask on, it is hard to tell. And a lot of people aren't smiling. And then some people's guessing and they'll come up to you like, now, is that so-and-so behind the mask or is that you, Sarah, or whatever? But, you know, we're kind of playing guessing games now when we see people, we might know them by their features, you know, or maybe if they say something, but other than that, a lot of times we don't even know who we're walking up on. Just keep 
So. That's true. And, and I, I had it happen to me a few weeks ago. I, my wife and I went to a Sunday brunch and I saw a guy, he looked familiar to me. And, and uh, of course he had his mask on, right? I didn't really see him good. And, and, and I, I ended up getting into the conversation because, you know, sometimes you, you, you play the game of, did you work at such this place? Did you usually go to this church? Did you go to this barbershop? Turns out I did. I think that a connection may have been the barbershop that I'd gone to years ago. Uh, but again, even in that, even if I didn't know him, he didn't know me. At least somebody came and spoke to you and was kind, right? I didn't go over there and say, <laughs> that'd been different if I said, I know you, you owe me $25. You know, and that would have been a whole different exchange. He, he would have felt very, very different about it. Then I would have felt different about it when I found out it wasn't him and I wouldn't get my $25 back. Or worse, <laughs> it was him and I still wouldn't get my $25 back. So true. So true. So uh, it's three books that you've written. Is that correct? Yes. My first book was called uh, As I See It, and that's available on Amazon as well. Uh, again, a book of leadership quotes. That was my first, first attempt at writing uh, leadership quotes. And my second book was called uh, Where Are All the Leaders? And I think over the last four years, without getting political, I think we've all been asking the question, where are all the leaders? Um, and, and then my last one, again, is, is can I just tell the truth? Um, and and, and I, I put a lot of stuff out uh, through either LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, just leadership quotes. And I, I might see something that somebody else wrote, and I might say something to it, or I'll write something of my own. Um, and, and I got to tell people, I feel like I'm more of a scribe than I am a writer in that uh, things just come to me. I can be just sitting there and it'll just come in. And I know as a writer, you, you could probably understand exactly what I'm talking about. It'll come in and you have to write it down right in that moment. Or sometimes it goes away and you've missed it. And I, I've learned that lesson all too well. So I always either have a, a pen handy or I have my, my uh, iPhone and use that, that memo document and I'll just type it in very quick. And then when I get a chance to transcribe it somewhere else, I will. But I I enjoy sharing and and the other thing is that my dad died when I was 36. He was 58 years old. He died of uh, bone can bone cancer, and uh, I wasn't raised with my dad, so I was kind of reacquainted with my dad somewhere. When I got out, I was at, I was in college, so 21 years old. And uh, when we met that day, I still remember we both. I I was apprehensive. I didn't know what to expect, right? And we just both burst out in in laughter. And so over that. From then until I became 20, 36, uh, we had a fantastic relationship. And, but, and, but then he died, right? And mm -hmm. even though I felt like the relationship was complete, I didn't have anything uh, tangible, you know, to, to connect me with him other than my memories, to thank God I have a good memory. And so I wanted for, you know, I have two sons and a daughter, and then I have two, two grandsons, Isaiah and Carter, four and five years old. Um, I wanted the opportunity to leave them something, a legacy in word, uh, wisdom from what well, they call me Papa. So for Papa's wisdom. And so when they become young men, they can go back and reflect on uh, what I said and then be able to use this for their benefit. Because I try to write things that are uplifting, that are true, uplifting. And, and I don't like to write uh, you can write the truth in two ways. You can write the truth in a positive vein and you can write the truth in a negative vein. I choose to go the positive route because I don't think that, again, as I've said, no one needs anything extra that's negative. We got too much that we're already fighting through and struggling with. So if I can give you a word that uplifts you, then so be it. And uh, so I'm hoping that everyone will get a copy and read it with their families. I, my, my biggest joy would be to find out that Folks are purchasing these books and sitting down with their children and their grandchildren and just having a dialogue about leadership. Because again, I think it's much needed. When I came up uh, years ago, you know, we, it, we were taught values, you know, self-reliant, respect. We treated our elderly in a certain way. You know, I, I was just reflecting with my mom last, uh, last Sunday at brunch that uh, even the bullies, right? When they walked past elderly people on their front porch, they would stop cursing. They would take their hat off, they would be silent, and then they would get down the street and they may start right back up. Right. But it was a matter of respect that you gave to people that were older than you. Uh, and you know, uh, you didn't go to certain places and act out, you know, that that happened in this. And now it, it seems like we the quorum is just gone. We, people do anything and anywhere, and, and um we say that they're leaders when we know they're not. 
And then we say we didn't know they were doing it when we know they were. And so I think that we have to get back to the basics around uh, leadership, uh, integrity, uh, and it, so we can build relationships. You can't build relationships with others until you can really look yourself in the mirror. And I think there's a lot of people nowadays that are walking by that mirror and not because you gained weight during the pandemic. I think it's because that we uh, have turned a blind eye to a lot of stuff that we know we shouldn't have. Well, now that you know a lot of us is having to stay at home, it gives us a good time to blend in with our children more and take the time to listen to what they have to say and take the time out to have more family time and just you know give them some of those standards to go by you know like the yes sir yes ma'am excuse me uh don't do this don't do that where sometimes as me being a single mother myself in the past uh, I do understand that, you know, sometimes people are put in that situation at, like I was uh, when I lost my husband that, you know, sometimes it's hard because if you're out in the workforce and you have someone there babysitting, well, you know, they only do so much, mm -hmm. but then you have to come back in and you have to take over and you have to reinforce your, as to say, motherhood or fatherhood or leadership or whatever so that we can lead them in the way that they should go and give them a good foundation to go on you were absolutely right i, I was uh, at a uh, friend from middle school no, actually middle school and junior high school reached out to me about two weeks ago and she said oh, i want you to read this article so i read the article and asked me to write it. I, I literally wrote like i don't know three four paragraphs on the thing but come to find out that's not what she really was calling about. What she really was calling about is that her husband, uh, whatever kind of job he has, and I didn't ask her, uh, he's, he's only home half the year. So she's having some difficulties with her 19 year old son. And she, and she wanted to ask me my opinion because she knew my children were grown. She, so she said, well, you know, you, you've had grown sons. And so how do I handle this? And, uh, and what I told her is I listened to what she had to say. I, and she was talking about basically the impact and uh, uh, you know of social media and his friends and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, well, one thing I came to the conclusion a long time ago is that as parents, we're always concerned about peer pressure, but we're not concerned enough about parental pressure. You know, why am I worried about, uh, am I pushing too hard on my, my son or my daughter when I allow the world to push as hard as they want to? And if you want to uh, keep them from swinging too far from the left or the right, then that means as a parent, you're gonna have to apply some forces as well. Uh, and you love them, right? Right. I, I don't think my, my children ever doubted whether I loved them. They may not agree with, with, with how I was showing it, but I think they, they knew that, that I loved them and, and, and that I cared and my, that my wife cared. And so it's, I think it's important to your point. I mean, they're, they're, and we, we, the term came up when I was when I was a kid, latchkey kid. I mean, your your parents had to work, and you had a key around your neck. And you know, when you got home, you let yourself in. You might have been there by yourself, or you might have been there with grandma or somebody. Uh, but I think the key of it is is that now that we have an opportunity for those of us who haven't been able to be home, um, you want that to be a time that's well spent and and quality time that you invest in. And maybe is 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 mending relationships or deepening relationships. I had a gentleman that I that I work with and uh, PhD and 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 very accomplished. And he told me he said that during this whole period of uh, with COVID nineteen, he's been at home. He hasn't traveled. He's normally traveled seventy percent of the time. He said, but but now he's been at home. And he says I've missed so much. Daughter, I think he said daughter was seventeen years old. You know, he's thinking about her about to leave and go off to college, and he realizes how much he's missed by you know, providing for the home right. uh, um, and and having a job that kept them on the road all the time. So I do think that when we have the opportunity to to engage and to uh, to demonstrate love and to model leadership, right? Because I think part of the issue too, and you would agree with this, is that, uh, you know, we love to say as parents, you know, do what I told you, but our kids often uh, at a crossroads because they heard what we said, but then they saw what we did. did. <laughs> and the two things don't necessarily always match up. And I think that in the context of being a leader and modern leadership, a good place to start doing that is at home. Uh, and I, I, one of the statements in my book talks about 
Uh, you know, you hear people talk, often say, uh, so-and-so was a pillar in the community. But the question becomes, are you a pillar in your own house? Because uh, you can be thought well of by the community and be written well of in the newspaper or on the internet. But what, are your fam what does your family say about you? I used to always joke and I say somebody get a position at the church and, and you say, well, did they ask their family whether they should get that position or not? Because I think in some cases they might say, no, <laughs> you don't want them. <laughs> you know, I know how to act here, but we know how to act when they're not here or, or even on the way here. Uh, but I think again, for me, uh, leadership is personal uh, and it's also something that you can share with others and it benefits others and, and it doesn't harm anyone. I mean, it doesn't hurt me to help you at all. I don't lose anything in that. And I may even gain something down the road because you might Amen. say, you know what, I, I remember this guy, <laughs> you know, that, that, that helped me with such and such. I was, I was telling a, a young professional today and I was teasing with her. She's about to go out on maternity leave. I said, now listen, now when, when, you, when you blow up, don't you remember this old man? <laughs> I said, now I can sweep. I got a whole lot of skills, you know. Uh, but again, I think that, it, and I was just teasing with it, but I think, but it really is true that it does come back. Uh, people are always talking about paying it forward. But one of the things I say is you can't pay it forward if you're unwilling to look back. Because the people that you're trying to help go forward are in many times behind you, beneath you. And if you're unwilling to do that, then you can't pay it forward. So true, so true. And that's one reason why I decided to come up with this. Like I said, I started it just thinking of it to do it for my ladies event for Valentine's. But then after I said it and gave it great thought, I'm like, this is something that I can just do more than once. And, you know, helping people to go forward in all has what happened last year and what people are still going through to know that somebody wants to reach either back or out to lend a helping hand, then, you know, that don't come around that often. So when people are trying to do that for you and extend their hand, then I think you should reach back out and say, okay, I'm willing to meet you, you know, halfway. So, you know, all I'm trying to do is just, you know, help everybody that I can uh, branch out from what they're doing. And, you know, even though I know you, if you, you're like me, you right now, you just have a set through people that knows about you, or like you said, you have 10,000 followers. So that knows about you, but then if they see more of you in different things, then you'll reach more people. And sometimes you may reach those people that really needed to hear that that day mm -hmm. at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So it's good that we can all share things with each other and know different things instead of sticking with a few things that we're just used to. You know, uh, I appreciate you saying that. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. Um, I, I really appreciate the fact that you know God gave you the intuition to and the unction to create this forum. Um, and so, you know, and, and you know, you and I talked about it before I had reached out to you, it's been a while ago, I forgot all about it, and, you know, but but there's a perfect time for everything. And so when you when you reach back, you apologize, hey, it been a, I know it was a long time ago, and I, but it was right on time. When you reached out, it was, it, was, it was right on time. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity to even though I, yeah, I, I got 10,000 plus people, 11,000 right now on, on LinkedIn that get my quotes and stuff and read them and use them and they go all around the world. They, my words have been farther than I have ever been. Probably couldn't even go all the places that they go. <laughs> but, the, but the neat thing of it is, is that in, in that is, I mean, you know, then you look at your book sales, right? And you look at, you, you sold one book, you sold two books, but I, I've given away way more for, for, for free. Because at the end of the day, you really want somebody to get the words, right? You right, want them to right. the encouragement, to get the help, to get the get uplifted and and to overcome depression and all those kind of things, right? In order to be successful. But you know, you do you do have your moments when you're thinking about, you know, what about me, right? And one of I, well, I think one of the quotes I had in one of my very first books was was about uh, givers and that how givers have to be replenished. And I think a lot of times somebody's giving and giving and giving and giving. We, we just think they can keep giving. Well, they do, you will run out. 
right? Because unless you get replenished and you get refreshed and somebody's encouraging you and giving you a good word or, or giving you a maybe a little short little sermon that somebody said or the little meme that's funny that picks up your spirit, then you can succumb to the very same things that many others can, can succumb to. But I'm just thankful to have an opportunity to allow people to see uh, the person behind the words and to know that, you know, and, and sometimes people see it. <laughs> I've even had some people take the time to be nasty and send a note back as if you didn't write it, right? Like, I'm not capable of saying these things or thinking these things. And that's hurtful, you know, and, and sometimes that comes at some most opp inopportune time. And my wife would be like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, somebody then took the time to wrote me a nasty note or <laughs> to say, well, you're trying to, uh, you got a marketing ploy. If I had a marketing ploy, I would have sold many more books. Right. In fact, I wish I, I wish I knew some marketing techniques to sell some books. And if anybody's listening, call me. <laughs> but <laughs> me but, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, call both of us. You know what I'm saying? But but, but my thing is, it's, it's really about, like you said, creating a platform where people can get these these uh, this word, get the, the this uh, uplift. Uh, because again, I call them, uh, I, I think I, I referred to them in, in one of my books as nuggets. But sometimes that's all, all you need is a nugget. I, I, get, get enough that you can uh, chew on all day. Right. You know, I, you don't want, you, I don't need something that I'm going to digest very quickly. I need something that's going to keep me because, you know, I'm, I'm happy to right now, but get 10 feet down the street and somebody say something to me crazy or, ups, or make me upset, right? And then, and, and now that's gone. I need something that I can keep chewing on. And even when I come up against opposition and I come up against, uh, you know, that, that thing that, you know, gives me a challenge that I know I can still make it through. And I know that, you know what, uh, I've, I've had some past successes. I've seen other people have past successes. I see some future successes. I see some things working their way out. I see God's hand moving and creating opportunities uh, for me and for mine, and and also allow me to be in a catalyst to, to, to make it happen for somebody else. I was somewhere the other day, and you know, I, and you know, you, I, I, it's probably happening to you. You go by, and, and sometimes you get moved to just bless somebody. Right. And uh, so I w saw this lady, and she was the guy next to it. I assumed that was either a boyfriend or a husband. Uh, I don't know because I didn't inquire that much. So. They were, they were sitting very close together. So I, I, I pulled off some money and I gave it to her. And so he, he says, what about me? I said, wait a minute, guy, y'all together. <laughs> you know, I just helped both of you. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I mean, I didn't have a conversation. I literally walked up, saw him and, and I was moved. I took the money out, set it down next to him and just kept walking. But, and I think that, you know, sometimes we can do that. It's easy to do that with words, right? And sometimes it's even more meaningful with words, even though you may think, well, $50 may solve my problem. Yeah, it may solve your problem right now, but a good word, you can keep it, right? You can, every single day, it'll come back to you and be top of mind. I even write on my mirror in my bathroom, I, I buy uh, grease markers and I write affirmations on, on, on the mirror so that while I'm brushing my teeth, combing my hair, my wife tells me I stay in the mirror too long anyway. <laughs> she thinks I'm, I'm, I'm primping, but I said, no, I, I, I'm reading and trying to encourage myself, you know? Uh, and, and she does the same thing as well in terms of having something up there positive, especially you need to pass an exam right up there, you're going to pass. Give yourself a positive affirmation that you're going to be able to do it. I remember early on when she was teaching and uh, she would come home and she would say, oh, these kids are this, and these kids are that. And, and she kept going on and on and on. So one day we were coming home from church and she was talking about these kids. And my, my children were small then. And I remember I, I, I said, um, it sounds like to me they need a new teacher. They, they need to do something about that teacher. Oh, she was upset. <laughs> she was upset. I knew she would be upset, but I did that really for shock back value because I I had been doing motivational speaking since I was like uh, twenty years old. I did before when I was in uh, high school. I did ex uh, extemporaneous speaking and boys' original oratory. So I've always been somebody who, who spoke and motivated people. So I said that. So she stopped and I said, "Listen," I said, "How do you think that the children in your class?" are going to be successful if the person who's supposed to be teaching them think they can't do anything. <laughs> and it was an aha moment for her. And I said, I challenge you to take a, get you a, a, a piece of cardboard and write down 10 positive affirmations, whether it be I can read, I'm smart, 
I know how to do math, whatever it is. And I said, is there any time of the day that they can uh, just be loud? She said, doing the, uh, uh, the announcements. I said, okay, well, doing the announcements, you let them get up and you let them scream these 10 things out. And she did. And, and, and she can uh, testify that those young people completely transformed, not for two reasons. One, because of what they spoke over their own situation. And two, because instead of, I think that when you, when we say negative things about people, that conditions our response to them, right? If I say mm-hmm. that this person is not gonna be anything, then why would I invest any of my time in that person? On the other hand, if I say, you know what, this is a diamond in the rough, right? I'm still saying that there's some issues, but there's some good stuff up under there, a lot of good stuff of of very high value. And I'm also willing to help, you know, smooth it down, help you get through this rough patch. And I've seen so many times that you see somebody that, you know, you never would have thought uh, by looking at them in their situation. But you gotta understand that the situation is not the person, right? You just have to, I mean, just like I got this background of this zebra over my head, but I'm not a zebra, right? If I go sit in another room, you know, whether there's a a cowboy on the wall or, you know, a a plant, I'm not a plant or a cowboy either. Uh, So that's just the situation I happen to be in. I am a person and I can uh, evolve, I can change, I can do really miraculous things. If somebody is willing to take the time to invest in me. And that doesn't necessarily mean money, although money works too. In this case, somebody <laughs> want to send a donation. But uh, I'm just teasing. That would be but, good. But it, it's, it's, it's somebody who takes the time to see enough of you. And you might even see me doing something wrong. But having the time to pull my, uh, back in the day, they used to say, pull your uh, shirt tail yeah. mm-hmm. and pull me to the side. I'll give you an example. Uh, in, uh, uh, when I was in high school, I was doing this speaking and I had made a comment. I was doing this talking and I said, irregardless of blah, blah, blah. And one of the professors came up to me. I never forget it. And I was about 19 years old. And she said, uh, baby, there's no eerie in regardless. It's either irregard or regardless, but not both because it's a double negative. And I never forgotten that to this day. Again, she didn't say it in a mean way. She didn't call me out in front of everybody and try to make me look bad, but she pulled me to the side so that that would be an area that I could improve in, in terms of how I communicated so I could be more effective and then, uh, and then be authentic and then be able to reach people. And that's what it's really all about at the end of the day is, is as, as we think about leadership, as we think about uh, developing others, it's really about being in an authentic space and place where you can really change the dynamic that uh, people are in by changing them, helping them to change who they are. That's right. Well, we wanna thank you, Mr. Brackett the third, for coming on today, sharing with us about leadership. And I know that each and every one has enjoyed it and is able to take something with them today. So uh, we thank you and we wish you the best of luck with what you're writing on to come out soon. And um, just continue to pray for us and, and watch the shows. And once again, I thank each and every one for watching the show today. And if you are interested in coming on, please contact me at Tuck Productions and I will be more than glad to reach out to you and send you the information and let you come on the show as well. So stay safe. And until we meet again, sincerely, Sarah Tuck.